In this eye-opening video, we delve into the world of cybersecurity to uncover the dangers of PEGASUS, the most notorious spyware weapon known today. Discover how this sophisticated surveillance tool operates, who it targets, and the implications it poses for privacy and security around the globe. We'll explore real-life cases where PEGASUS has been deployed, examining its impact on journalists, activists, and everyday citizens. Learn about the technology behind this spyware, its capabilities, and the ongoing battle against digital surveillance. Join us as we discuss the ethical considerations and legal ramifications surrounding the use of PEGASUS. Don't miss out on understanding how this spyware has changed the landscape of digital privacy forever. Subscribe for more insightful content on cybersecurity, digital privacy, and the latest threats in the tech world. For the past decade, the security of mobile devices worldwide has been under threat. The most influential governments have found an ally in the spyware known as Pegasus to infiltrate smartphones, uncover secrets and carry out arrests, and even assassinations. Pegasus is considered the most powerful and controversial espionage tool ever created, prompting countries like the United States to take action to mitigate the national security problems it has caused. Additionally, other governments, such as Spain, Mexico, India, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia, have also been reported using this spyware, in some cases with extreme consequences. Pegasus is spyware that installs itself on devices running specific versions of iOS and Android, collecting all the phone's information without detection. Pegasus first made headlines in 2016 when a failed attempt to install it on Arab activist Ahmed Mansour's iPhone revealed its existence. Mansour, a human rights advocate, received a message with a link promising classified information about torture in United Arab Emirates prisons. Suspicious, he forwarded the link to the security company Citizen Lab, which uncovered that if he had clicked on it, his phone would have been hacked. Initially, Pegasus used phishing techniques to trick victims into clicking malicious links. However, as people became more aware of such risks, Pegasus developers improved the spyware, making it capable of infiltrating devices without any user interaction by exploiting vulnerabilities in operating systems. Once inside, Pegasus granted full access to the device messages, calls, passwords, location and data from apps like Gmail, WhatsApp and Facebook. Pegasus's success lies in its ability to exploit unknown vulnerabilities in operating systems, bypassing security mechanisms, and becoming the most sophisticated attack ever recorded against smartphones. The company behind this spyware is NSO Group, founded in Israel in 2010. Initially, the company developed a tool for support technicians to access smartphones with the user's permission. However, after capturing the interest of a European intelligence agency, NSO Group shifted its focus toward developing software capable of accessing devices without user consent. Pegasus gained even more notoriety in 2018 when it was revealed that the Saudi Arabian government had used it to spy on journalist Jamal Khashoggi who was brutally murdered that same year. Since then, Pegasus has been linked to the surveillance of businessmen and politicians such as South African President Cyril Ramaphosa and Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos. This spyware raises serious questions about how to control its use and prevent it from being used to violate human rights, as in Khashoggi's case. NSO Group faced harsh criticism from both independent journalists and government agencies. Citizen Lab, a web monitoring organization, pointed out that Pegasus has been used as a weapon against human rights, mainly by totalitarian and dictatorial governments. It is argued that the use of spyware by police or military forces sets a dangerous precedent when investigating individuals deemed suspicious, questioning what is considered suspicious, and under what terms the espionage is conducted. During this controversial period, Fast Company published leaked documents revealing NSO Group's pricing. The Israeli company charged $50,000 to hack 10 devices, including phones and tablets, and an additional $1.15 million to install the software, granting access to messages, calls, and connections to programs like WhatsApp. By 2021, Pegasus had attacked tens of thousands of devices in 50 countries, 
being available to at least 40 governments, which generated millions in revenue for its developers, not including potential under-the-table payments. In November 2021, the U.S. Department of Commerce added NSO Group to a blacklist of dangerous companies, accusing it of endangering national security by leaking personal data of key figures. The investigation revealed that the company had participated in over 150 espionage activities against journalists, human rights defenders, and politicians, some of which resulted in murders or imprisonments. Following this, in August 2022, NSO Group's CEO Shalev Julio resigned and was replaced by Yaron Shohat, who laid off 100 employees and announced the company's sale. In March 2023, Omri Lab took control of NSO Group after legal disputes with a U.S. financial firm. Regarding the use of Pegasus in different countries, investigations by the Pegasus Project revealed that in India, the spyware was used against ministers, opposition leaders, journalists, activists, and judges, among others. In Togo, in 2021, Reporters Without Borders revealed that journalists like Lai Lawson and Annie Soso were spied on by the government. In Jordan, at least 16 journalists and media employees were victims of Pegasus, including members of Human Rights Watch. In Spain, the director of the National Intelligence Center, Paz Esteban Lopez, was dismissed in 2022 after it was revealed that Pegasus had been used to spy on Catalan and Basque separatists. It was also suspected that figures such as President Pedro Sanchez and Defense Minister Margarita Robles were spied on. However, the investigation into this espionage was suspended in July 2023. In Mexico, Pegasus played a crucial role in the capture of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, but was later used by the government of Enrique Peña Nieto to spy on civilians, journalists, and political opponents. By 2021, of the 50,000 phones worldwide that were intercepted by Pegasus, one-third were Mexican, including figures like Carmen Aristegui, Carlos Loret de Mola, and businessmen like Carlos Slim. Pegasus is a clear example of how technology can be misused to suppress dissent and stifle freedom of speech. With its advanced capabilities and stealthy nature, it's a digital weapon that can be used to silence anyone who gets in the way. But it's not too late to take action. We need to demand stronger regulations and better protections for our privacy and security. The stakes involved in this case are extremely high, and it's a stark reminder of the risks that journalists and activists take when they speak out against corruption and injustice. It's our responsibility to stand up for those who are fighting for our freedom and to demand that our governments take action to protect our privacy and security. So, what do you guys think about Pegasus and spyware in general? Do you think we need stronger regulations to protect our privacy, or do you think we're just being paranoid? Let me know in the comments below, and if you want to learn more about how to protect yourself from cyber threats, check out my video on cybersecurity tips. The story of Pegasus reflects how technological advancements can become double-edged swords, with consequences in both the digital and real worlds. For now, this espionage masterpiece is believed to still be operational, and it is just one of many similar tools that exist today. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram where there's new content every day and many surprises coming soon. Don't miss them. Without further ado, I wish you an excellent day.